In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a PLS SEM model into a covariance based CB SEM model. To do this, first go find your PLS model, open it up, and then click on the convert button. Select what type you would like to turn it into. Currently, we have two options process or CB SEM. I'll turn this into a CB SEM. Call this my first CB SEM model. Save. And there you go. It added residuals to each of the manifest variables over here. It did not add residuals to these manifest variables because they are part of formative factors. Now in covariance based, I would not have formative factors. So let's just pretend these are not for now. I'm going to invert this measurement model, invert. And notice what it does automatically. It automatically switches the error from the factor to the manifest variables. I can also add a correlation between these two. And before I run this, you'll notice they have not yet figured out the missing constraint here. In a newer version, if you're watching, they probably already solved this, but in the current version, if you're switching between formative and reflective measurement, you'll have to add that constraint in here. So double click one of the lines and add a constraint of one hit apply and do the same to that other factor. So in covariance based methods, it is an assumption that one path per latent factor is constrained. So we've just done that. Now we can calculate basic algorithm, just take the defaults. And here you have it. Right now it is showing on the inner model the path coefficients, we can change that to standardized if we want, we can see the R square on the endogenous factors. Notice the outer model is still not standardized. We'll switch that to standardized. There we go. That looks more normal. Now for the output, you can see we have path coefficients like we would with a PLS model. But even though we didn't bootstrap this, it produced p-values. And we can look at all of the output like we would with a PLS model. The only difference here in a causal or structural model is that we can now see model fit. Look at that. We have a CFI for our model an SRMR, an RMSEA. Everything else is as normal with construct reliability and validity, discriminant validity. And if we want p-values on everything, we can, of course, go run the bootstrap. For a graphical output, change it as we did before. And now you can see on everything we have p-values, but we do not see model fit when we run the bootstrap, nor do we see construct reliability and validity. So it's as easy as that to convert a PLS model into a covariance based model. 